Hi, my name is Sarah. I have <laughs> learned that people, some people struggle with the question, how am I going to make a difference? I struggled with this question, became consumed by it, and completely lost value in who I was. I don't want to just tell you a story of how I broke, but I want to tell you a story about how I learned to find value in who I am and my unique life story. So let's begin with how I broke. During my senior year of high school, people kept asking me what I was going to do with my life, what I was going to major in, and people kept asking me to plan my future. At the time, I didn't, so like this question, how am I going to make a difference, seemed to be like this ever-present fly that I couldn't swat away. <laughs> um, during, um, so at the time, I didn't think that I was doing anything of significance, so I became extremely insecure. I, um, I saw my best friend, Kendall, undergo two liver transplants, start a nonprofit, call it Kids Caring for Kids, and raise about a million dollars for vulnerable children in Africa, mainly those affected by AIDS. I saw Kendall getting all this recognition for the work that she was doing, so I thought that that's what I needed to do too. I thought that I needed recognition. Um, so I was thinking like, how am I going to, I saw making a difference like people view material success. I thought that the bigger the amount of difference I was making meant the bigger the amount of recognition that I would get. So I started planning like, okay, how am I going to make a difference? Maybe I need to start a nonprofit. Um, maybe I need to raise X amount of dollars. And so as you can imagine, like I got lost in this comparing game. I kept comparing myself to other people even if I wasn't necessarily good at what they were doing. Um, on top of that, I was learning that life does not always go the way that you want it to, and I think that's an extremely hard life lesson to learn. But so one such example of where I was learning this was um, during my senior year of high school, I tried to plan a dance marathon to raise money for um, Kids Caring for Kids is trying to uh, build a high school in Kitwe, Zambia for life song. So I was like, yes, I'm going to plan this dance marathon. Like, I'm going to raise X amount of dollars. I am going to get recognition for my school. Like, this is going to be great. Um, only to <laughs> find out that it was canceled three days before the event. And um, something that was completely out of my control. But because it failed, I thought I was a failure. And not only did it not happen, but I had to go to every single individual and ask them if they wanted their money back. Um, in order to make a difference, I thought I had to obsess over my future, or as my mother says, future tripping. Um, <laughs> because I kept comparing myself to all these other people, I kept trying to squeeze down their path of life, and even if I wasn't necessarily good at what they were doing. One such example was I considered being a nurse, um, but for those of you who know me, I am terrified of blood and I hate the smell of hospitals. When I get my, <laughs> when I get my blood drawn, I'm one of those people that like, needs the nurse to have a juice box ready for me. Um, you know those like paper things that they put over the beds? I sweat so bad because I get so nervous that I, it sticks to me. <laughs> so like, I get off, off the bed and it's, I'm just covered in paper. So as you can imagine, I would, being a nurse is just not my calling in life or as of right now. <laughs> um, I also thought that um, in order to have a bright future that as a senior in high school that I had to know my major. I thought if I knew my major, like, then I'm going to know how I'm going to make a difference and like this plan is great, like I'm just going to follow that. Um, but so you name the major and I at one point tried to pursue it, which I learned is not true. You do not need to know your major, especially as a senior in high school, not even as a freshman. Um, I was also, <laughs> I thought that in order to have a bright future that I needed to be perfect in everything. Um, my senior year of high school, I obsessed over the five, um, my grades in the five AP classes I was taking. I was senior class executive officer for the student council, and um, I was working on top of that to try and earn money for college. So as you can, um, 
As you can imagine, I was, all, I was all over the place. I kept running towards these things that weren't necessarily me, and I kept trying to make someone else's story my story. Um, I thought I became blind to my own uniqueness and my own self-worth. Um, I thought graduating in the top 10% of my high school would leave me happy, only to find out that it didn't leave me with the lasting joy or a sense of wholeness. Um, with all this pressure that I was putting on myself, I didn't just break mentally, but I broke physically. Um, I lost 20 pounds. And the thing that scares me the most about this picture is my waist is about the same size as my little sister's, who was 13 at the time. Um, I felt so unbelievably empty and useless. I didn't see myself going anywhere, and I kept trying to make a difference, and I just felt stuck. I felt like I wasn't doing anything. Um, I was giving up, and so was my body. However, it was in my brokenness that I learned that I needed to stop placing all these rules on top of my shoulders, because I was withering away, literally. Um, I also found that in my brokenness that God was showing me that I needed to love myself before I could love other people. Now that I have taken you on a journey on how I've broke, um, on how I broke, I want to show you about how I built myself back up again. Uh, I lost the 20 pounds in about a month, but learning to value and love who I am today took a process of about two years. And I like to think that I am continually adding joy and love to my life. I found myself in baking. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love baking. <laughs> um, I was seeing that I could bake um, biscotti or ice cream or cookies for my friends and family, and it was bringing smiles to their faces. So every day after I would come home from school, I would come into the kitchen and I would bake, and I'd take all these um, baked goods into, uh, into this little box, and then I would bring it to the social services office at my high school, and then they would relay those delicious baked goods into, onto the kids that were homeless um, in my school. So I was finding value in something as simple as just handing someone a cookie. I found value here in Labra. Uh, Labra is Loyola University of Chicago's ministry that feeds and um, builds relationships with the people who are homeless here in Chicago. Um, Labra allows me to do what I love. I love listening to other people, and I love asking people questions and just about their life. And often the people who are homeless here in the city um, just want someone to listen to them because often people even refuse to acknowledge their presence. I was finding that seeing someone shake because they're so cold was not easy. It was not easy at all, but I was finding by the simple action of just handing someone a peanut butter jelly sandwich and by handing them a pair of gloves that it was making a difference. I found value in Kids Caring for Kids. Kids Caring for Kids is a um, nonprofit, like I said earlier, that raises money and awareness for vulnerable children in Africa, mainly those affected by AIDS. And I joined Kids King for Kids in January, officially in January 2012 as the chairwoman of the board and director of communications. I love Kids Caring for Kids. Um, <laughs> I love the fact that it allows me to encourage. I love encouraging other people. And I love that I get to encourage our team. And I love that I get to encourage my best friend, Kendall. Um, I love that I get to encourage other people on how they can use their gifts and talents and how they can use it to serve vulnerable kids. Um, I was finding that through working, like working in a nonprofit that it's extremely hard, to, or it's extremely easy to tell someone that a kid needs education, but it's extremely hard to get someone to go out and run for that kid's education, or it's extremely hard to get someone to um, give up their Starbucks for that kid's education. Um, but I have found way too much value in the work to ever stop what I am doing. <laughs> um, this past September, some of the kids from Lifesong, which is the school that I had mentioned earlier, um, some of the kids from the primary school uh, came to Chicago, and I got to meet some of them. And Peter, 
came, one of the students, Peter, came up and snuggled up next to me, and I cannot explain how much love and how much joy I felt in that one moment. That one small moment reaffirmed why I want to make sure that every single kid has a loving support system and that they have an education and that they feel loved and have food. Kids caring for kids has given my life a purpose. I found myself in running. <laughs> I love running. <laughs> it's something that keeps me grounded, though. When I was training for the half marathon that was this past September, I couldn't go out and run 13.1 miles. I had to value every single step that I was taking because with each step, I found that I could go farther and farther and farther. It was showing me that a small step was leading to a bigger picture. I also found that with kids caring for kids, um, I could use it to, I also found with running that I could use it to raise money for kids caring for kids. See, I realized that I didn't need to go jump on a plane across an ocean to go make a difference. Um, I was learning through these things that I was enough and that I was unique. Um, by serving, I found myself, and by finding myself, I was realizing how I was making a difference. I didn't have to stress out about trying to be something in any of these things because parts of myself were already in them. Participating in these things isn't a huge stress because they leave me with this like overwhelming sense of joy. Um, they leave me humble, but they give me so much strength. I have to be completely honest with you though. There are still days where I doubt whether or not I'm making a difference. In fact, when I was asked to give this talk, um, I began asking myself, like, who am I <laughs> to give this talk? Um, realizing that every act of service that I do is enough is my daily cross to carry. Um, I'm reminded how, but like, but then I think about how far I have come today. I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't be the Sarah that's standing in front of you without every single little thing that's added up to me right now. <laughs> I've realized that it's the small things in life that make a difference. And I've realized that there's no such thing as enough of a difference. A difference is a difference. Whether it's in baking, whether it's in running, whether it's editing friends' papers, whether it's just saying, hi, how are you? They all matter. It's in these small acts of love that we find ourselves because they leave us with love too. Um, during my senior year of high school, I didn't love or value who I am, but because I love and I value who I am today, it allows me to see the value in the things that the world considers small. Um, when I went off to college, I was given this book instead of the traditional Dr. Seuss book. And when, if you flip, it's, the title of the book is How Many People Does It Take to Make a Difference? One. And if you flip through the book, uh, you'll find this statistic. And it says the odds of you being born in this particular time, place, and circumstance is about one in 400 billion. If anything, this proves that there's a reason why we're all here. And there's a reason why we're all different. I'm a girl who's realized that every single day, the world is going to tell me that I'm not enough. But I'm also a girl who's realized that I have to find value in, the thing, in things so that I know that I am enough. Um, I have found value on early morning runs. <laughs> I have found value in asking people how they are. I have found value in listening to others vent. I have found value in encouraging a non-for-profit. Um, every time I doubt, it's these, love, it's these things that show me that every loving mark matters. Today, I'm a girl that's OK with the fact that I don't know what my next 10 years of my life are going to look like. But I know that I'm making a difference today, and today will lead to tomorrow. I am also a girl that has learned to find value in herself. And by learning to find value in who I am, I can pour out so much love on other people. And I think that is far more important than receiving an A on a test or getting a promotion. I am a girl that has learned that each step leaves a mark, each footprint is different, and each step leads to a larger picture. Thank you.